Hi everyone, hope you're doing good. I'm going to be working on an iPhone 7 Plus logic board that was sent here for a no power repair. Um, as with most of these videos, I have not had a look at this. I have no clue what I'm getting into. Your first experience with this PCB is going to be my first experience with this PCB. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it out of the box. This company has actually shipped me several logic boards. I don't think they are one of my regulars, as in I think that this is going to be uh, some of my first stuff that I've ever gotten from them, so I have absolutely no clue what I'm getting into. Uh, logic board only repairs have been really hit and miss. I've got, uh, I've got some really good logic board only clients, and I've got some really bad logic board only clients, and I'm hoping that I don't have to wind up letting the... Uh, boy, that sticker came off of that board awfully easy. See that? I'm hoping that I don't have to let any really bad logic board only clients screw up all the fun for the good ones because I have been really really close to pulling logic board only repairs off of the menu they have been driving me insane because I do a good job at fixing them and I send them back and then they come back for unrelated problems so okay we've got this iPhone 6 plus board out of the housing uh, the back stickers are falling off of it so somebody's already tried to look at it so let's get this straight under the microscope and see what we're up against. I'm not hooking power to this. I just, I'm not. Let's see this. Let's not lose track of anything. Uh, I, first of all, I'm mostly concerned about what's been done to this board before I got it. So straight under the microscope we go, shall we? All right, here we are under the microscope. Let's flip this around to the orientation that I am used to. Let motherfucker. Let's ramp up the uh, lighting just a little bit and show you what we're up against. Um, I'll have to check the notes. I don't believe this one says a word about any prior repair attempts, and that is excruciatingly frustrating to open one that doesn't say a word about prior repair attempts and have prior repair attempts. I'm just about to the point whenever a customer doesn't tell me that it's been pre-screwed with, I'm just going to automatically no fix it. This one doesn't look that bad, okay? Let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and have a look at the rest of the board here. Seriously, okay. Well, we're missing our little transistor here, okay? I think, I believe that's a transistor. There is a component here that normally sits between, uh, basically we've got, uh, most of these pins are for battery and VDD main, and one of the pins is not. So basically, this chip that we're missing here just ties the battery rail to VDD main. That's, that's my primary concern here and it's missing now whenever now keep in mind i get a shit ton of prior repair attempts whenever i run into a board that has that chip missing it tells me that there is most likely a short on a main power line and the technician that was troubleshooting this what they're doing is hooking power up to the battery rail and since that chip is basically what is tying the battery rail to the main power line that is the chip that's taking all of the current so that chip gets really 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 hot now in a lot of my videos I'm sitting here talking about uh, you know I'm, I'm doing a lot of my work by troubleshooting heat and hunting down the demon by finding what's getting hot and if you don't realize how that's wired together and you just hook your power onto the battery rail well then you following the heat the first thing you're gonna do is knock uh, this little transistor off of here and then the next thing you're gonna do is if it's a VDD boost short you're gonna wind up screwing with the VDD boost IC because it's the next IC that's gonna get hot I cannot count how many of these phones that come in with those two ICs missing. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So here we have the Qualcomm variant of this board opened up. I opened this one up because it has more data. Uh, it has more available data. So let's zoom in here. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about with this little transistor. This is Q2101. And if we select this right hand row of pins, this is PP underscore bat underscore VCC. This line if you zoom out, you will see goes directly to the what the what did you click on something else? Yeah, I did. Golly, okay. This line, if you zoom out, as you can see, it goes directly to uh, the Tigris IC here, that's the battery voltage going into Tigris, or coming out, whichever you want to look at it. Tigris is the battery charger. 
And if you look at the battery connector, those three pins, they're hooked directly to the anode of the battery connector. So basically what you have here is this little transistor hooked to the battery. And if you, if you look at the other side of this transistor, you can see that that is all going everywhere on the board. That is PP underscore VDD main. That is the main power line. So on the schematic, if you look at Q2101, you'll see we've got PP underscore bat, bat underscore VCC down here, and you got PP underscore VDD underscore main up here. And if there is a short on PP VDD main or any other power line on this side of this transistor, this transistor here is stuck carrying the load. Okay, so it gets it gets really, really, really hot. So what I run into is people, you know, tracking down the heat signature, and the first thing that gets hot is that transistor. Boom, it's gone. Okay, they, they take it off the board. Now, if there is also a short on VDD boost, okay, they do the same thing up here. Let's have a look at the schematic for VDD boost. So here is U2301. U2301 takes... VCC main, uh, VDD main and turns it into VDD boost. So if we select this side of it, here is VDD main going into it, and this is VDD boost coming out of it. Okay, so this takes one power line, makes it into another. I think their voltages are similar. I don't, uh, I believe their voltages are actually the same, but for some reason Apple has made a separate power supply for, um, for VDD boost. So let's have a look at this chip on the schematic. So here is U2301. And as you'll see, you have this uh, dark line coming in here, PP underscore VDD main. The bold line means that it is carrying current. And then coming out of this chip, you have the same thing. So what happens is if you got a short on this side of VDD boost, then U2301 is stuck getting hot. So we're missing our little transistor, and we've got fuckery around the VDD boost IC. So what do you think the odds of this thing having a boost short is? Hmm? 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 Let's see if we can solve this board for this guy, all right? Let's go ahead and turn the voltmeter on. Uh, we're going to set this to Omi ohms mode, okay? It's connected to the PC, and voila! We have liftoff, all right? Oh, hang on, adjust it, get rid of this stupid white. Whoops. Oh, no! All right, now we're going to have a look at this board under the microscope. So what I'm going to do here is right away, I'm going to check for shorts on VDD main, and I'm also going to check for shorts on VDD boost. Why? Because I have visible clues. And I will tell you also, I've got visible clues here along the shit. Along the shield, it's kind of wavy and bent up. It's got the signs of a smashed up housing. Sometimes I really wish I could see the housing on these board only deals. Um, all right, guys, let's check. Resistance mode measurements to ground. Let's see. Let's put let's put the letters right on the boost I see there, so you can read it. All right, we're gonna I'm gonna put my red my black probe on ground, and I'm gonna put my red probe on VDD main. And what do we get? 0.7 ohms to ground. Okay, so we have a nice firm short to ground on VDD main. Let's go ahead and check since we got some fuckery around VDD boost. Let's check VDD boost here. All right, we're getting 6,000 ohms to ground on VDD boost. So we know that this board does not have a short to ground on VDD boost. And you know, I hate to speak too soon, but I'm about to say that I don't think these guys have messed it up. Um, I think they knew where to stop, man. Some of these will come in and they'll have the CPU shield unsoldered and they will have shit messed with all, all over the place. And they're like, here you go, dude. You told me you'd fix it for this price. Like, I did. This one has a short to ground on VDD main, okay? Um, we're gonna use heat to track it down, only we're not. I tell you what here, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and hook this thing up to the power supply, okay? Let's see, I'm gonna grab a probe off of my lovely Radio Shack meter. I love this meter. Now, a high. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to hook this probe up to here, okay? We're going to, um, let's see, let's set our voltage on this side of the power supply. Let's go ahead and set it to 4 volts. Love this power supply, guys. If any of you are curious about the tools that I'm using, links are in the description. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to set this power supply to parallel mode, just in case I'm going to need more than 2 amps of current. 
uh, let's see, let's just leave it ready for parallel, okay? So right now we're going to deliver two amps of current to this board. And to do that, I'm going to grab the ground clamp here in my bundle of wires, okay? And I'm going to clamp that right here onto the PCB. I always like to go to this little eyelet thing here because it, it sits up like that, okay? So we're going to clamp that onto the PCB. And we're going to jump over here under the microscope arena. So there's the DC power supply on the screen. We do not need the meter at this very moment. The power supply is now capable of delivering two amps at four volts. Now it's not that I am, I'm, I'm sending two amps of current through the board. I'm making two amps of current available to the board. And also let me say, I don't think two amps is going to cut it. It's probably going to take more, more than two amps to find this because if we have a really firm short and firm shorts do not create much heat. So here we are under the microscope. We know that these two here are VDD main. Let's go ahead and we got the power supply on the screen. Okay, we're going to put current into here, and this is going to be 2 amps at 4 volts. Okay, you can see it's drawing my supply down to 0 0.44 volts, and I'm feeling for heat. Okay, I'm not feeling any heat. I'm going to move to the bottom of the board here, and I'm going to continue putting power in at the same spot. not feeling any heat. So we're going to go ahead and turn on parallel mode. Now this has me set now at two amps per side, so this would be four amps. I'm going to go ahead and bump this up a little bit. Yeah, let's just go ahead and bump it up a little bit. Let's just go ahead and set up to three point, let's set it to 3.2 amps per side. Yeah, 6.4 amps. You think that'll do it? Okay, now we're going to go back under the microscope arena and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to apply current here. Now this is a hell of a lot more current, guys, so we're going to get... Oh. I forgot a step. You got to turn the power supply on. Okay. There we go. Now let's go ahead. I'm going to bump the same spot. I'm not getting anything. Did it fix itself? Oh, you'll piss me right off. There we go. Okay. Three amps. This had like a flux barrier or something. Okay. I'm starting to get a little heat up here. Now I'm not holding it on. I'm just touching it little bits at a time. Hmm. That's kind of scary because it feels like it's the main PMIC, which that would suck big hairy balls now, wouldn't it? So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a little... Why do I got meter on my face? You guys don't want the meter on my face, do you? <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to get a little drop of alcohol. I'm going to drip that on the board and I'm going to do the same exact thing. Only I'm going to look and see if I can see anything bubble, see anything scrunch up like alcohol does when you apply voltage to it. And let's see if we can figure this out. So I'm going to get me a big old wet Q-tip here. Okay. And we're going to switch you back under the microscope arena. And we're going to drench this board. Okay. There we go. I've yet to make a fire with a spark doing this, but I'm sure it's possible. Okay. So we're going to apply power. Hmm. Main PMIC melted off awfully fast now, didn't it? Let's do that again. Can I zoom out a little farther? There we go. Okay. Let's drench the board. Do not troll me while I'm trying to look smart. iPhone 7 PCB. Okay, let's try it again. Something sizzled. Is that boost I see getting hot? Let's look up here again. Do we have a weird situation on VDD boost? Let's go ahead and drench that boost I see. Let's try that again. Let's pay attention to the boost area. Now I'll tell you what's getting hot. What's getting hot is that capacitor that I'm touching. Is the short the capacitor that I'm touching? What would be the odds of the capacitor that I chose at random 
to test be the one that is actually shorted. Let's 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 just try that again. All right. So we're going to go ahead. And what I'm going to do? Let's look at the uh, let's look at the board view. Come on, Mofo. Let's look at the board view. Let's grab another spot here to stick VDD main into this board. Okay. Um, I'm going to go over here. This row of caps. I'm going to go for C1853. Okay. So here you are back under the microscope. And let's re-wet our Q-tip. Wet the shit out of this. There we go. Yeah. And let's put voltage into C1853 on the left-hand side. Be this one right here. No, that's not it. Ooh. All right, sometimes you just got to burn them out, guys. I'm going to show you what I've got here. I've actually I actually just found the short. You might have been able to see it, see it in the view, but I'm not sure. So look at this little cap down here that has slowly started to smoke itself. See that crap? Now, if we look over on VDD, gosh, I, I really shouldn't show people how to burn these boards to find this shit, but it honestly... Uh, with the tools that I have available, it is my very, very fastest and most efficient way. So, let's look at uh, let's look at the schematic here. Actually, look at the board view. And if we scroll down to this area, this entire row of caps here, these are all on this VDD main power line. So we've got a cap here that looks completely toasted, and we have a phone that, uh, we, and we have a short. So let's remove the cap and see if we can get rid of the short. Now, this cap is heavily and nastily underfilled. So I'm gonna put this board into the board holder. I'm really glad that this customer stopped um, because many people uh, also, like I said, many prior repair attempts, I cannot count how many of these boards have came in with the PMIC carved around. It's like, leave the PMIC alone. It's an iPhone 7, we're crying out loud. All right, so now we have this board in a holder. It's fastened down fairly good. Okay, we're going to put this back under the microscope and we are going to remove our little gremlin here, okay? So I'm going to beginning, begin to heat this up. Now I'm not heating it up to melt solder, I'm heating it up so that I can... Ooh. Got the top layer of coating on that PMIC a little bit. I'm heating it up just so that I can soften up you mother... I'm heating it up just so that I can soften the glue around this just a little bit. The goal here is abso freaking lutely to not melt solder, okay? I'm putting just light pressure beside the PMIC being very careful to leave a little bit of underfill between my blade and the IC, okay? And we're just going to tear that right up out of there. Being very careful not to lose that shorted piece of crap on the board like I just did. Let's see. Uh, where did it go? Man, that sucks when that happens. Oh, I think that's it over there. Okay. So, all we've done here to fix this board is we removed this steaming pile of garbage from the board. Okay, so here we are with the multimeter now in resistance mode, and we're going to go ahead and check for shorts to ground up here next to this boost IC again. We're going to check VDD main, and we're going to check VDD boost. If you have issues with VDD main or VDD boost, there's no sense in checking anything else because it's not going to work anyways. Let's go ahead and check here. Wait, I'm in, I'm in mega ohms. Of course, we're going to get zero. Let's set this to auto ohms. All right, let's check this again. I'm doing black probe on ground, red probe on VDD main. Okay. Now we're getting 25,000 ohms to ground. That reading is completely, entirely acceptable. Now we still have, uh, this board now I believe it will at least attempt to boot. I don't know if it's gonna have any other issues. Um, we still have the missing transistor to deal with. Ow, elbow. Ow, stupid drawer. Ugh. We still have 
we still have this missing component down here to deal with. So I'm going to go ahead, we're going to shine up the pads for this. Now with this one, to be completely entirely honest, there are a couple of them I have sent out the door without that component on there. A lot of times, um, it's completely okay if you just want to bridge VBAT to VCC main, it will still work. Now, I have not did any, that, that was for data recovery. I have not did any long-term testing as far as how it charges the battery, how the phone behaves. So if it's a phone that I'm planning on putting back out as a repair, I will go ahead and I'm going to replace this component, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and shine up these here pads. Okay. Let's get some leaded solder in here because lead-free solder sucks. Okay. Applying some heat so that my iron will do this. Just trying to get nice little domes on all these. We don't want to clean them off too perfectly clean. So, by the way, I would be interested if anybody out there watching this video knows how leaving this component out may affect the phone in either a good way or a bad way, I would like to know. I feel like it must be, uh, it must affect it in a battery charging way, but like I said, I've never, I've never left this off for the sake of uh, the phone. Um, I will bridge this for data recovery only, and to bridge it, I don't stick a wire in or anything, I just put a huge blob of solder right here across the side of it, and that works out just fine, so, okay. So now that this is pretty well cleaned up for, for a replacement. Now, since I hardly ever run into one of these that is bad, this is a component that I do not have in stock. So to get this component, I'm going to sit this board holder out of the way. I'm going to go after my trusty box of boards here. And I'm going to dig for an iPhone 7 PCB or 7 Plus. Or, let's see, what are all these? Hmm, yeah, there we go, okay. Wait, did I see a... S I'm holding one. <laughs> Does it have the part on there I need? <laughs> Has the part I need. All right, so let's set that aside. Treat my donor boards with utmost respect. Now we're going to harvest... Now we're going to harvest this component. So let's go ahead and switch you back under the microscope arena. And now is a good time to mark and know which way this thing is orientated. And as you can see, the dot is to our bottom left, so we are going to go ahead and grab a hold of this little prick. Careful not to break it because I'm limited on donor boards for 7 and 7 Plus. Warm it right on up there. And pick it up off the... Ow, burning my fingers. Okay, pick it right on up off the board. So now we've got one of these that we can screw with. I'm going to sit it directly down on the mat here. Okay. Actually, I'm going to reball this off to the side over here on the table because I like my table to do reballing on. My power, my my hot air has started to pick up a little bit of vibration. And you can see it in the microscope. All right, let's add a little bit of flux to this. Oh, come on. Oh, no, 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 no. I do not want to have to find another one of you. I want you to be the one. You are the one. That's a piece of crap tweezers. Let's use my other pair of piece of crap tweezers. All right, so we're going to sit that right down on the bench like that. And I'm going to do the same thing to its pads. I'm going to take, I'm going to take a little bit of leaded solder because lead-free solder sucks. And I'm just going to hover a ball around this. Let's add some more flux because my ball hovering didn't go very well. There we go! And now I'm going to try to get that to stay on my tweezers. While I switch over here and grab me a Q-tip with alcohol on it because I'm very unorganized. I've still not settled into my new environment here and now we're going to use this q-tip to clean that flux off of this now I think with a chip this small you would probably be okay just to make sure you've got good size humps on the board and on the chip and you would never have a problem with that it would work just fine but on larger chips you know not, uh, 36 pins and stuff like that 
I would not do that because you really need things to be a consistent size so that none of the balls are, are missing their contacts. So there we go. We've cleaned this off pretty good and well. Now I'm going to grab a stencil here and I'm going to try to find one that matches. I'm going to use my old trusty stencil because it's my old trusty stencil. And does it have this on here? Let's see. This is for an iPhone 6, but we don't really care, right? Should I use the one for an iPhone 7 or should I just wing it? Let's wing it. So now... I'm going to just hover this around here and I'm going to try to find something that matches. Nope, that don't match. Nope, that don't match either. How about you? Do you match? Ooh. Ooh, baby. That's a perfect match. Alright, so let's take a little bit of solder. Just put a little spot of solder, a little solder here. Right. There we go. We could just bridge this thing and it would boot, but this is somebody who's expecting this to be fixed, and I don't want any weird behaviors caused by me cutting corners, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and hold this down here, huh? and we're going to begin heating this with hot air. This will ball really quick. Almost. Not too fast. We don't want to squirt out solder everywhere. There we go. Okay, so now we have nine beautiful balls. Nine beautiful balls is better than ten ugly balls. Right, we're going to go ahead and heat this up. There we go. And now we have centered our nine beautiful balls. Nine beautiful balls. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brand new reballed chip and I'm going to lay it right here where I can get to it. Okay, And then we're going to take our PCB. Ooh, that's our donor. Let's not put it back on the donor. That would be smooth, wouldn't it? Okay, now we still got our PCB in the holder. And now we're going to put this on the board. Okay, so here we are where this thing goes. There we are. And that was sitting on the board just like that. What do you think the odds of them having nudged uh, Tigris? I had one the other day where this is the same exact situation and Tigris had been nudged. And the end result was 40 milliamps and brain dead. Or maybe it was 70 milliamps. And it wound up being a bridge under Tigris. So we're going to hold that in roughly the right spot here and warm it up till it starts to bubble. Or settle like it did just there. I'm going to let go of it. Let's get you in a little closer so that you can see this happen. Okay, there we go. And my nerves are a little screwy today, so I'm not going to nudge it. I'm just going to drop it onto the board. Almost. Man, that's some big balls. Okay, now it's settled right on the board, and I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. Uh, Alright guys, do you think this board will boot? Turn the hot air off. Should I own for good measure? Tell you what, while that cools off, let's clean my stencil. I never let my stencils go dirty anymore. Because nobody likes a dirty stencil. You filthy stencil. Now let's see, to test boot this, let's just grab a 7 Plus housing. Let's grab a 7 Plus screen. Let's grab... A 7 Plus housing with the best battery in the world. Like that battery? Mm -hmm. It's probably a fire hazard. Throw that off to the side here. We're getting ready to find out if Tigris has been screwed. We're going to hook up the power baton. And we're going to hook up the, dick, the dock flex. And I'm going to go ahead and hook up a screenerini. Am I in front of a camera? There we go. Now, let's hook up the DC power supply. Alright, we're connecting the power supply. Let's see what we get. Oh, baby. We get a perfect zero amps. It's four volts. That means we got rid of the short. Alright, here we go. Testing. And one, two, three.
Put and press. 60 milliamps. So this is a good reading. 100 milliamps. 80. And we got an Apple logo. Yes. We're booting. Yes. Now, I don't have the factory home button hooked up to it. So it's going to take at least a galactic year to boot. Um, so we're just going to sit here and let this thing boot. I hope you all have a galactic year to waste with me. And wait. What? It already went to a bright screen? Let's move this down in case they got like a picture of their vagina or something on it. You won't be able to see it. Right, let's get it down here. You can tell it's not looping because you can see the top part of the screen, but if they've got a picture of like some organ, you won't be able to see that. So we're just going to continue to wait for this to boot. That's more like it. Or dun, 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 taking forever to boot. We have to wait for our solar system to orbit around the Milky Way one time before this thing will actually give me a lock screen. Um, let's see, we still have the power supply on the screen, so you can at least see what the current is doing. We'll see that there's not any crazy spikes, and we'll also see if it decides to go brain dead and sit forever. It's been hanging at 200 milliamps for a long time, right? Eh, we're still going to call this normal. Come on, ice cream. Come on, baby. Show me the money. Come on, baby. Oh, you're still at 200 milliamps. Now it's starting to make me nervous. A watched iPhone 7 never boots. You got to take your eyes off them for a while and look away. And then they'll, they'll eventually boot. Come on, baby. Boot. Fuck. It went off. It came back on. The screen flashed. Hang on. Maybe I did it the wrong way. Well. This would be a really good video if this phone boots, right? I believe it looped again. Wow, that sucks. What a bummer. You think it's that I'm just not meditating right? It could just be that I'm not meditating right. Or it could also be if I plug in a home button to this thing, the supply, it, it, it'll actually boot. I've ran into that before too. It doesn't actually have to be the right home button. I don't know what it is, but I have ran into some, some of these that will not boot until you connect a home button. Do I have a home button here for an iPhone 7 Plus Arini? That one's got the cable ripped off, so that's not going to work. Loopy, 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 you piece of crappy. All right, let's turn the power supply off because it is not booting no matter how hard I meditate. I've been meditating on this for like two and a half hours, and it's still not booting. Um, all right, so we've got the power supply off. I'm going to disconnect this screen because I think that might be part of the problem. We are going to go ahead and test this phone with a screen assembly that has a home button in it, okay? Nobody tell anybody I'm using a customer part for testing. That's a big secret. Okay. There, we have another screen assembly hooked to it. This one does have a home button in it. We're going to connect power. There we go. Now we're going to turn the power supply on. It's drawing zero amps. That's a good sign. Now we're going to go ahead and press the power button to boot. And one, two, three. Boot. Okay. Now let's see if this will boot with a screen assembly that has a home button in it. Um, I don't know how to explain it. There has been times when I feel like Apple is using a tally system to where like if there's X amount of errors during boot, then it'll loop um, because these things will boot without home buttons. They just take forever, but I have ran into some of them that will not boot without home buttons. It makes me nuts. Now it's possible updating the software might cause it to boot, but there we go. It, it booted right up. All I had to do was hook up a home button. It went from boot looping 
to now it's it's booted right up. You see, we're we're at a passcode screen. The screen has finicky touch. Okay, is the touch finicky because of the screen, or is it finicky because of an audio issue? This one appears to have laggy touch. Okay, I just pressed zero twice, then it popped up. Okay, so let's get out of this home button here. I'm going to press two twice, and then it popped up. So we have a lag in touch. Now, I don't know if the lag in touch is due to classic iPhone 7 problems or if the lag in touch is due to the screen assembly. So I'm going to test one more screen assembly. So here is another iPhone 7 Plus screen. I don't know what it, you know, I don't hardly ever use this one, so I don't know if it works. So what I'm going to do to test this, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get the home button poked, connector poked down through here. I'm going to go ahead, I bet the customer who donated this screen remembers it. I'm going to go ahead and slip the home button, slip it into the hole here. Okay. How people wind up connecting these upside down, I don't have a clue, but they do. Okay. So now we've got it in there the way it goes. And we're going to carefully plug it in. You dirty bastard. Oh, the home button's not in there right. <laughs> Got it. All right. So now I've put a home button in this iPhone 7 Plus screen. And now what we're going to do is see if it'll boot with this screen. Now what I'm trying to do here is test to see if the touch issues I just had were due to the screen itself, uh, which, you know, I'm not really sure. Or if possibly, I got some goop on their sticker. Damn. Uh, possibly uh, this thing has a board level issue that's causing finicky touch. So here we've hooked up the power supply. Now we should get the same speedy boot because we've got a home button hooked up to it. It doesn't have to be the right home button. It just has to be a home button. Okay. Should get a boot any minute. All right, we've got a booting Apple logo, and now we're going to see. And now we're going to see if this thing will boot right up. Okay, we should get a brightened screen here in just a minute. Oops, I got a glare on it. Okay. Boy, it's drawing a lot of current during boot. Is that home button shorted? Why are we drawing so much current? Holy crap! That was a lot of current. Is it the screen assembly? Am I smoking something? Let's just let's check, go ahead and test touch, okay? One, two, three. It was the screen, okay? Not having any issues with touch. Let's switch over to emergency call so I can push a bunch of buttons. Let's do it. I'm having serious exposure problems today, guys. I need to stop exposing myself to get rid of these exposure problems. Okay, let's do it right here. One, two, three. Okay, so there's not, we're not having any issues with touch here. This thing boots right up and run. So before this video gets a whole lot longer, I'm going to go ahead and call an end to this. Um, to finish this job up, I'm going to be cleaning my flux off the board. Uh, well, the best that I can. It's not too bad to leave some flux behind. You just don't, it, the flux that I'm using isn't really that corrosive. So to finish this job, I'm going to be cleaning, um, cleaning my flux off the board. And um, I'm going to double check this thing and try to make sure that everything is okay. I believe this customer has supplied passwords for these boards. So um, this one is going to be a successful repair, guys. Um, let's see. Do I have anything else to add to this? No, I'm ready to move on. Um, so if you like this video, please click the thumbs up button. If you don't like it, feel free to leave a comment below. And as always, most of the tools that I'm using are linked in the description. So um, that's it for this video, guys. I do thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Have a good day. Bye.